After you first load Bobcat, for Bobcat to properly communicate with your CNC machine, you'll need to come in and add your CNC machine and configure it. To do this, under CAM part, right click on Milling Tools, and then come to Default. Under Default, there's an option for Current Settings. The Current Settings dialog will bring you to your machine. We'll click on Machine Parameters. Here's the machine make, type, and how many axes it uses. You'll need to set up your machine in here. Let's go ahead and add a machine. So we'll choose Add. And let's say that we have a Fanuc OM. You can make the machine name any description that you'd like of your machine. Then you specify how many axes the machine has. If it's a two axis machine, go ahead and leave it set to three. If it's above, choose the amount of axes. In this case, we'll say that this has a fourth axis. As the system does rotary conversion, it needs to know whether you're going to use the X axis or the Y axis for A and B rotation or Z or a custom axis. Let's say that this is going to be the X axis that gets the rotary conversion. And we'll choose OK. Now we have a four axis Fanuc OM loaded. The type is a milling machine. When we click on this, we get the options for milling, laser, plasma, and water jet. What these do is this changes the system from two-axis cutting for laser, plasma, and water jet that includes laser, plasma, and water jet tools, or mill allows us all of our standard cutters and our two- and three-axis toolpath. In this case, we'll choose milling. Now, if you have a router, that also falls under the category of milling, so we'll leave it set to milling. Then you have your maximum number of tools, or how many tools the machine can hold. If you're manually loading tools, just set this to a high number. If your tool changer, say, holds six tools, set the maximum number of tools to six. The maximum spindle speed will limit the spindle speed that can be output by Bobcat. Now, if you know what your maximum spindle speed is, go ahead and enter it here. If you're unsure, set it to a very high value then the software will not limit the spindle speed that can be output. Most machines, if they receive a program that has too high of a spindle speed, will handle for that and generate an error. So you shouldn't have to worry about damaging their machine from having too high of a spindle speed, as there will also be maximum spindle speed settings in the controller itself. The same is true for the maximum cutting feed rate. Now let's say that this has a maximum spindle speed of 25,000 RPMs and a maximum cutting feed rate of 500. The tool change position is currently not used in most of the post processors, but down the road we may look at setting the actual tool change position or the height of the tool changer. Next we come to posting. Now, this is where we set up which post processor this machine uses. So we'll go ahead and go to Select, and in this case, choose the Fanuc OM post. Several post processors install with the Bobcat Cam system as default. Now, there's also many post processors available up on the website to be installed. If you do not see your machine in this list, You'll need to go up to bobcad.com, click on support, then post processors, and install your post processor. Let's take a look at that for a moment. So we'll come to bobcad.com, click on support, and then under downloads, there's post processors. There's a post processor wizard that allows you to select which version of software you're using, what type of post processor, and then the make and model of your machine. 
Once you've done that, you'll get a sample of code. And there's a download now button that will allow you to save the post-processor file. Once you've saved the post-processor, you can go ahead and double-click that file and then run the installer for it. Once done, this will install into the directory that Bobcad looks for the post-processors. If we come back to Bobcad, you'll see the Haas OEM post that we had just installed will be loaded. Now, important, when installing a post processor, if for some reason on the website you do not see the make and model of your machine, what you can do is complete a post request. What that allows us to do is create a post processor that's customized for your machine. You'll see here there's a link on the page to request a standard post processor. The form will ask for some information about your company and also give you the ability to attach files. For us to create a post processor for your machine, we require a sample known working program from the machine and also a list of GNM codes and any can cycle options that you have available be sent to us. Now, with post processors, not, not all machines are the same. Many things can vary about the controller that's been set up. So, even if there is a post processor that's available for your machine, you're going to need to test it and make sure that it works for what you need. If for some reason it does not work or has some codes that you want to have changed, send us in that post request form and we'll build a custom post processor that will drive your machine. This process takes up to two weeks for us to build the post processor and is included with the purchase of your software. Post processors can also be edited by the end user and there's some documentation on our website or you can contact our support department how to do this. So a post processor is what drives the machine controller or converts the G code into a language that the machine can understand. So it's one of the most critical parts of the software to have a working post processor and it's also very important as one of the first things that you do to get the post processor installed and get a program made and sent to the machine so that you could see if it runs how you need it to. Should you have any questions or any troubles, do contact our support department. The tool pattern option allows you to select from different tool patterns that you've set up. Now, the tool patterns have to do with what tools are called within features, which we'll look at later. For right now, let's just use the standard tool pattern. The NC file path is where the system creates temporary files as it posts G-code and also the default location for saving G-code. The file path has to be a write or read-write directory. You have to have full access to the path that this resides. I would not recommend changing this to a server location. You can change the place that you save G-code files to on the fly when you program. The default path is inside of the Bobcad Cam data folder. I would suggest leaving it there unless you're an advanced user. The NC file extension is also very important. The NC file extension is the file extension used for saving G code files. Now, since we are using a Fnuc OM, the extension or the file extension used for G code files is .tap or .tap. I do believe a Fnuc may also take a .txt or .txt file you will need to know this information. 
if you're unsure of what file extension your CNC machine uses, you could do one of several things. You can either contact the machine manufacturer and ask them, or your local machine dealer. You can also go online to bobcat.com and browse our knowledge base. We do keep a list of known G-code extensions for machines. Lastly, what you can also do is either check the manual that came with your machine, this should be listed, or look at an existing file that you have that runs the machine and check it for what the file extension is. If the file extension is not set properly, when you save the program to a disk and bring it to the machine, the machine will not be able to identify that there's a program on the disk. So it's very important that this is set. Some machines will use .nc, others .tap. Some machines will even use a .m extension, or no extension at all. It's also very important to put the dot before the file extension. Now, this is the milling settings. The program number, this will be the default program number used when generating programs. So whatever program number you want to use as a default, you'd set in here. Then you also have the absolute or incremental settings if the post processor is going to output an absolute or incremental positioning, or based on the setting of the post processor. When first getting started, I would recommend leaving this on post setting, which is its default. The sequence numbers box allows you to change the starting sequence number and how they increment. Often, people will start with, with 10 and increment by 10, so the line numbers in the G-code will be output as 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. Or if you set this to 1, the codes being output or the line numbers being output will start with 1, then 2, then 3, and so on. So you get a little bit of control on how the sequence numbers are output. The subprograms option is a very custom function within the post processor that will output a Fanuc style subprogram. I would not recommend turning this on. By default, it's turned off. Later on, as using when you're using the system, you can look at using the subprograms, turn this on, and see if the code output works for you. For, start, for just getting started with the software, leave the output subprograms turned off. And especially for testing the post processor, we want to first make sure that everything's configured properly. Some machines have the availability to use fourth access arcs. If they do, you can check this box. By default, it's turned off. And again, for just getting started with the system, you should leave this option turned off. Once we've done this, you can click OK. And now your machine is available within the system. We right-click Milling Tools, go to Default, then Current Settings. And now the Fanuc O machine that we had set up is available with all of the options that you have selected. Whichever item is first in this list will be the default setting for Bobcat. So if you only have one machine, you may want to come in and delete the other machines. So that the make and type is first set to your machine. If you have multiple machines, you'll set up all of your machines in here and set the first one to be the most common machine that you use. And then you can change this as you're programming. When you change the machine make, it will change the post processor being used and several other settings within the software. So it's very important. One of the first things that you should do is come in, create your machine make, choose or install, and then choose a post processor to drive the machine. 
and then you'll be almost ready to get started programming with a Bobcat.